All right, here we are out in my little shop. We've got our hat all put together, and all we need now is a buckle for these two straps, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So I've got selected out a little piece of brass. Don't need much, because it's a fairly small buckle. This is where we're gonna make the buckle. You can see that I've mounted a, a vise on the side of my carving booth here. You wouldn't believe how handy it is to have a vise mounted up like this horizontally because I can put my stock in there. I got my jeweler saw and can cut out the shapes without chasing it all over the place or these little forks. I don't know if that's in the frame. Sometimes they have these little finger kind of things that stick out, which is handy also for uh, cutting things off. But, you know, you the thing can jump up and down. You can snap your blade easier. I just find that it's really handy to have a vice set up like this. So, and generally I have a little piece of rawhide kicking around here, which will pad the grass and keep it from getting scratched up. If you guys get into this sort of thing, I advise strongly making little templates of things that you make, especially things that you think you might make twice. I just dug this out of my uh, jewelry drawer and that's just the right size. I like these double D, the kind of a 18th century style buckle. Might even go back further than that, I'm not sure. But I just like the shape of it. They don't make them much anymore, not this small. <laughs> so I just put a little uh, dab of glue on the back of here. Just a little bit will do. These things, if you can get them, they sell them at the hardware store and places they're great applicators for glue just going to apply that template where it'll fit like that it doesn't take long to, to set up enough to use it all i want it is to not move when i'm scratching in the design you know the pattern and then i'll remove it and if i do it before the glue really really sets up the template comes right off again so it's kind of good that way i'll have it for the next one it's been long enough it'll uh, hold so I've got a nice little scribe here made of a gigantic needle and I slipped it down through the pith of a little sapling or a handle. I like these for, you know, the round end point for scribing on metal because uh, metal tends to take triangular blades and things and skate them off in different directions. Scratch this on. Make so many things this way, um, little hinges and Scutcheon plates for locks and all sorts of things. Oh, I've got a, one of these thin little butter knives you can find at antique stores. They've got such a thin little blade that you can generally oops, get behind things, and pop them loose. Yeah, I've got my image on there. And this, put it in a messy little drawer here. I put this drawer, it's just a, oh, it's like a drip pan out of an old oven. Put that, mounted it here below my vise so that when I'm cutting silver and stuff, I can open it up and the shavings of the silver dust will fall down into that tray. I can scoot it together and melt it down and reuse it. I'm going to move over here for a second. I'm going to put a couple dimples in here for so my drill doesn't chase all over the place i'm gonna hold that down pretty tight be able to get your fingers out in a hurry in case uh, when the drill goes through the back side sometimes it grabs and uh, your stock will start spinning around as fast as the drill and can lead to some pretty good injuries if you're not paying attention a nice little piece of leather here to pad the jaws with so they don't scratch up the brass. In case I want to use that little piece another time. Something else. So I'm going to cut out the outside. There, and that part's cut out. Almost there. And the drill came through the um, back side of this. Is, that drill might not have been quite sharp as I would have liked to. It brought, stretched some of the brass out. I'm gonna 
file that off. Just get rid of it. Ta-da! And I broke a blade. But that happens. Like I said, I broke a blade. If you buy jeweler's blades, buy them by the gross. <clears throat> Nothing worse than having a project stall because you haven't got a blade for your saw. These blades are cut brass, silver, steel, bone, even wood. Okay, there's that. Some files here. I've got a little rat tail file that I'm going to use to do the ends with. This one here is a half round, which I'm going to use to do the, the broader sweep here. I'm going to start out with that. <laughs> Second one's always trickier. First one can be anything it wants to be. The second one has to be just like the first one. Let me take it out of this vise and show you another neat little gadget. I hear these are very handy. Find some 220 sandpaper. A little tiny piece of steel wool. There, that's uh, one side. I'm just going to flip it around and do the other side just like that. So I'm going to let the camera rest for a minute. So all I got left is I'm going to take the corners off of this center bar. Unfortunately, I have to do that without the vise. That's not that bad. I don't have to get too fancy just to have the corners gone. Yeah, and that's all that. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to and these little bars have the these up rather just a little bit both sides there that will help the leather to scoot through there pretty little buckle there. Alrighty. So we're going to make the catch out of this nice brass wire here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the sharp edges off of the end here where it's been snipped off before. Just kind of round it off. 400 grit paper. That's what I do for... Uh, when I make French hooks for earrings and such. Scratching going through. So that's that. Now I've got some round nose pliers. I'm gonna make a little curl in it. Flat nose pliers. Pinch it up tight. Around her diagonal cutters. Ta da! We'll go ta daing too much. Take the sharps off of that. The trickiest part is to do it without muffing up the nice finish I've got on the buckle. Having to do that all over again. There. That's a uh, Buckle. The leather will keep that in the center, so I'm not too worried about it. 
Okay, here we are back in the sewing room. Got the buckle all shined up. Now we're gonna put it on the hat. So, come up with a place to do that. I think right about there would be good. So, I'm gonna cut the strap off here. And what we're gonna do is, because uh, we don't want big bulky stuff, we're gonna skive it down. Right to nothing. That way when it uh, gets folded over, it'll taper down onto itself real nice and it'll be this big lumpy thing sticking in the back of the head. Next we take a little punch. That's a little leather punch I made out of a chainsaw file. I'm gonna cut out a little bridge between the two holes. And that gives us Nice elongated port for the catch to come up through. And that's how it's gonna be. I'm gonna want a little loop, a retaining loop for the tail end of the piece of leather that comes through the belt. So I've got a piece of leather here and I've already skived it down. So that needs to be big enough to accommodate two thicknesses of leather and I'm going to mark it and cut it and that's good this looks like a tangled mess but I think I can pull this off all right one more little stitch here oh, that's all snugged up nice Uh, take the buckle back out. Put this in. On. Around. That's probably a good spot for it. That's nothing worse than these things drifting all over the place, so I'm gonna try to square that away with a little, just a, one simple stitch. Snug. So in place, a very simple series of stitches. Now, kind of don't have the head to measure it to, so I'm going to guesstimate where to start. Uh, remark there. I'm going to put a series of holes in so that I'm bound to find one that works. Yay, loops big enough. Thank you guys for coming along with me on our little journey through the process of making a hat. We've gone from this to this.